In this presentation we will discuss European feudalism in the Middle Ages. European Middle Ages refer to the time period between the fall of Western Roman Empire and the beginning of the early modern Europe between 5th to 15th century. European feudalism was a combination of legal and military customs in the Middle Ages. It can be described through its features for the feudal economy, division of lands, distinct social classes and hierarchical role of the church. The feudal economy. The feudal economy was based on self-sufficient agriculture production. Commerce with outside economic regions were restricted. Agriculture was one of the most important characteristics of the social economic life. The feudal economy. This production was self-sufficient and therefore there were no recourse to other producers. The amount of money was very small because trade was limited. All and any surplus production was taken by the feudal lords. Transitioning from the feudal economy to the next characteristic of European feudalism, the division of lands. As said in the previous point, the feudal economy was incredibly tight with little to no commerce. Therefore, the question becomes, then what was the currency of European feudalism? Well, in order to answer that question, one must first look at the beginning of feudalism, which is, as you'll see in the top right corner, the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire was incredibly vast, so once it collapsed, it left much of Europe open for rule, and everyone, as you'll see in the second picture on the right, wanted their own slice of land. This is because, as you'll see in the third picture, land became a form of currency during the Middle Ages. You'll learn in the upcoming characteristic on feudalism about the strict division of the social classes. It is with the division of social classes that created the division of land. If you look to the left side, there is a picture of King Henry II. On the map next to his picture, the top arrow is pointing to England, which was under his rule as he was at the top of the hierarchy. However, a king during the Middle Ages of feudalistic Europe would portion out his land and give it out as fiefs to his people, who in exchange would pledge their loyalty. This is why you'll see on the map that though Henry II was the king of England and France, due to his various relations and conquests, his other titles gave him fiefs elsewhere. Thus, Henry II was the King of England, as well as the Duke of Normandy, the Duke of Aquitaine, the Count of Maine, and Anu of Turin. To further explain the divisions of lands and its correspondence with the division of social classes, let's look at an example. A Duke's fief would be called a duchy. However, the Duke could also portion his land by giving a fief to a count, thus creating a county. Therefore, the further down the social classes one goes, the further division of the land. The division of lands within the feudal system is another reason why feudalism is so complex. With the various persons in charge and the division of lands, the next question becomes how did one rule their lands if one had multiple fiefs in various parts of Europe? The beginning of this answer is seen in the last picture on the right, Vikings. When Vikings raided Europe, especially England, there needed to be some form of unison and fence against attack. Well, as explained earlier, the exchange of land for loyalty already gave whoever was in charge a standing army. Therefore, all that was needed was protection of people and a base. This led to the creation of castles. One of the first things that comes to mind when thinking of the Middle Ages are knights and castles surrounded by moats. This is an incredibly accurate portrayal to the time period. For when Vikings came to England, as you'll see in the bottom picture, Alfred the King of Wessex, also known as Alfred the Great, initiated the building of castles and towers across Wessex, as you'll see in the second picture. Some historians also call these castles fortresses, as they were exceedingly complex. An example of a castle during the feudalistic Europe is seen in the biggest picture of this slide, which is the Dover Castle in Kent, England, belonging to Henry II. 
Due to the system of feudalism placed within Europe, it caused the division of lands, making this a major feature of feudalism. During the feudalism in Europe, most of the rights and privileges were granted to the upper classes. In the hierarchical structure, the kings occupied the topmost position, followed by the lords, barons, vassals, bishops, knights, and serfs, who were also known as peasants. One of the major characteristics of European feudalism was the strict division of social classes. The different social levels were amongst the king, who was also known as the monarch, the lords, who were also known as nobles or barons, the knights, who were also known as vassals, and peasants, who were also known as serfs. The distinct social levels were responsible for the role of each individual. These roles affected the way people lived in society and determined the responsibilities that an individual held. Now, let's go into the details of each and every class in the feudal society. The king, or the monarch, ruled the whole kingdom and owned all the land in the country. Because of this, the king was a part of the highest class, with no other individual in it but him. The king had total control over all the assets, and he used to decide as how much quantity of land to provide on lease to the barons. The lords had to swear an oath before taking up the granted land on lease, so as to remain faithful to the king at all times. In the case of a lord presenting poor performance towards the king or the land, the king had the power to withdraw the granted land and give it to another lord belonging in that class. All the judicial power was in the hands of the king. Now for the lords, the lords leased lands from the kings, which was known as a manor. The lords were the second wealthiest class. They were called as the lord of the manor. They established their own legal systems, designed their own currency, and set their own tax regulation schemes. In return of the land that they have taken on lease from the king, the lords in return had to serve the royal council, provide the king with knights and military aid to tackle with any form of war, provide food and shelter facilities to the king, and they had to pay rents and taxes. The knights were the third highest class in the feudal system, right below the lords. The knights were provided the land leased by the lords and in return, they provided military service to the king at all times in need. They also had to protect the lords and the lord's family. They used to keep a part of the land provided to them by the lords and distribute the rest of the lands to the peasants. They also used to set their own taxation and rent guidelines for the peasants. Their main job role was to give protection to the king and therefore they were paid quite well. Now, lastly, in the lowest class belongs the peasants. The peasants were the lowest and poorest class in the feudal system. They were granted land by the knights. They had to provide food and service to their superior classes on demand. They were not allowed to leave the manor without prior permission. They had no rights and they were also not allowed to marry without permission of their lords. I'm Sadia. I will talk about the hierarchical role of church. In medieval ages, the church was dominant in everyone's life. People believed that God, hell, and heaven existed. They considered the church as the only way to heaven. The Roman Catholic Church was the supreme power during the Middle Ages. It worked as the stabilizing force to keep the community together. The laws and rules of the land, public policies, and governance of the people were all affected by religion during the Middle Ages. Pope, as the head of the church, had great impact over the king and total control of the clergy. Pope had certain duties to perform, above all was to decide the matters of spiritual importance and the official policies of church. Immediately below the Pope in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church were the Cardinals. The primary responsibility of the Cardinals was to elect a new Pope when a Pope died. Bishops held the next rank. They were the leaders of the church, serving under the Pope. Their duty was to maintain an army of their own and support the king during a war. Most bishops were noblemen. They also supervised the church's priests, monks, and administered its business. 
The church owned vast areas of land and commanded a large number of knights. In early Middle Ages, it was a common practice for a bishop to lead his own knights into a battle. Next were the priests. They were appointed by the bishops and provided spiritual instructions and conducted religious ceremonies in local or parish churches. Monks were the last in this hierarchy. They were men who gave up their ordinary lives to live up in monasteries under a vow. They lived a very simple life, could not marry, and devoted themselves to serve the church, study, and prayer. Conclusion Feudalism arose in Western Europe during the 9th and 10th centuries. Feudalism began when citizens were able to secure land holdings. The major characteristics include the setup of feudal economy, the vision of lands, distinct social classes, and hierarchical role of the church. These attributes defined European feudalism. Due to those elements, feudalism emerged rapidly in other parts of Europe because it was deemed a viable alternative for new social circumstances.